I'm here with Jake Marmer, and it's time to talk about Robert Creeley's famous, famous, famous poem, I Know a Man. But really, Jake, I am so interested in how I love the way you perform. I love the way you kind of, I don't know how to describe the way you perform, but I would love you to perform this poem several times, and we'll just talk about the performance, because everybody knows the poem otherwise. So do it. Let's do, do it, it, man. Let's hear it. Okay. I know a man. I said to my friend because i am always talking john i said which was not his name the darkness surrounds us what can we do against it or else shall we and why not buy a goddamn big car drive he said for christ's sake look out where you're going hey Jake, I, you, you let's, really let's like do. you really like the you know respecting the line breaks Oh, yeah, I, I and, think. And, and Creeley doesn't really do much in that, in performing this poem. He does some. But why do you, why do you like to do that? You, quite, quite aside from Creeley, why does Jake Marmer like to do that? Oh, well, you know, did, wasn't it Creeley himself who said, like, line break is the, one of poets' most important tools? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So th I, I don't know why he doesn't read it out loud. It, that has puzzled me, honestly. And, and I wonder why he doesn't, because it's, it's like they're so juicy, that they're so satisfying, and, mm. and they create music that I can, I can feel them in my body uh, as, I, as I break on them. Well, you perform the poem uh, with great um, energy, I would almost say upbeat. And the poem is very much... Well, it's, an, it's a satire of downbeat. It's a satire of people bumming out. Mm. But you, the way you perform it makes me feel like we could just keep talking. You know, it's not a bad thing that John and the speaker are talking incessantly. In the poem, it seems to be a bad and thing. Darkness surrounds you. them. Yeah. Um, I, I want to hear you do it again. Just go mm. with it. Well, I, I mean, just to respond, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I, I like I would do it over and over and over. Like as why, you, why, saying, why do you, why do you like to do it over and over? Well, because I think with every iteration, it's like, you know, I remember reading Creeley saying that he learned a sense of a line from Miles Davis from like mm -hmm. listening to Miles Davis and Charlie mm -hmm. Parker, and like if you go with that line of thinking, line of thinking, then you would iterated over and over like choruses and i i think this is where like the, the mm -hmm. poem asks you for and mm -hmm. and I, yeah it, it's a it, it may be darkness surrounds us but it's like it surrounds us but we're inside a poem like <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what, what what can be bad the dark background of a zoom um well the, and 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 what's so great about this particular situation is that we're talking about the darkness surrounding us, but in Zoom, you have a bright light, California light behind you. I mean, you're, it's almost a- Blinding. It's a, it's a response to the darkness. All right, perform it again. And, okay, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you about the pronunciation of SD and why SD is so cool to you. Mm. Yeah. As I third to my friend, because I'm always talking, John, I said, which was not his. Name the darkness surrounds us, darkness surrounds us. What can we do against it or else shall we? And why not buy a goddamn car, drive, he said. For Christ's sake, look out where you're going. <laughs> you like to think of poems as scores for performance. Am I right? Yes. So you, you think the performance is maybe almost as important as the score on the page. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, uh, I mean, aside from just the ancient um, heritage of poetry being oral and being performed, I think um, this way is, uh, this is how I come to understand a poem, especially a poem like this. This is the first crack at interpretation of it. And it's also ah. a culmination of different interpretations um, yeah. that may be going on in my head and are not articulated. But as I, as I voice them, like that, all, all, all these, these things, yeah, interp new interpretations happen and the old ones filter in and then it, it just it becomes more fluid. Jake, you're saying very casually and enthusiastically something that's quite radical. So I want to underscore it and make you say it again, which is that the poem doesn't mean anything or doesn't mean as much as it can until it is mouthed, performed, uh, in, until it's embodied by the tongue and the teeth and the, and the jaw. 
and then it starts to mean something. You're really saying that. Well, you know, I, I don't want to knock, you know, poetry that lives on the page only. And, but but it, it, there's just so much life. Like, this is where it came from. It came from the mouth and the teeth. And then if you want to inhabit uh, that mm -hmm. energy, if you want to catch that energy, the yeah. energy doesn't, it's not purely cerebral. Uh, it also, or, or it's all, it's the cerebral includes all of that other stuff and you still start to hear it um and you start to be with it and i, I don't know and just... i think this is partly jake i mean this you were proving your point about how performing the poem can lead us to its meaning even its semantic meaning because this poem is kind of about over cerebration it's about it's about two guys or at least one of the two driving in a car and talking about big ideas and existential ideas and it's all <laughs> bullshit the poem seems to be saying, or the speaker seems to be saying, but, but you can discover that by, through the glories of your mouth, doing the always talking. And mm. I think I've heard you perform uh, and you're always talking. <laughs> oh, you, you see what well, I mean? At least when I'm performing, otherwise I can, you know, quietly shut up and watch the, by the way, uh, speaking of always talking, um, the darkness around, what do you make of that line break? Uh, darkness surrounds well, I'm us. I'm glad you brought it up, Jake, because Creeley, with all due respect to Creeley's many amazing performances of this poem, he does break that line in speech. Because first of all, there was the daring, the hubris of doing a line break in a syllabus hyphen, syll yeah. syllabic hyphenation. Um, so, He's got to do it. He's got to dare to say darkness surrounds us. He does perform it that way. He does. So what do I make of it? I mean, it's an irony. If it surrounded you, you wouldn't have to break. If it's a surrounding, <laughs> if it's a, a kind of a circumlocution, and this poem is about circumlocution, mm. either you're for circumlocution or you're against it. The speaker seems to realize that he's driving with a person who's against circumlocution, like shut up and drive. You're just circumlocuting. Mm. Mm. Well, surrounds us, circumlocutes. It's one of the reasons why we love poetry because the word gets performed to its meaning. It surrounds us. How's that for an answer? I love it. I, love <laughs> it. I want you well, to read it one more time and then I'm going to ask you one more question. And then since this is Mod Poem Minute, we'll you know, cut off after a few minutes. Well, can I try to read it without those line breaks? I, I don't know. I'm feeling, let, let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, how do you yeah. feel about that? Actually, uh, why don't you read it twice more in any way you like? All right, cool. Just go right to the next. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay. That's just what I wanted to hear. Okay. As I said to my friend, because I'm always talking, John, I said, which was not his name, the darkness surrounds us. What can we do? I against it or else shall we and why not buy goddamn car drive he said for christ's sake look out where you're going as i said to my friend because i'm always talking john i said which was not his name the darkness surrounds us what darkness surrounds us what darkness surrounds us what can we do against it the darkness or else shall we and and why not buy a goddamn car drive a goddamn car. Drive, he said, for Christ's sake, look out. Where are you going? I love it. I love it because, you, you know, left to your own devices, you begin to splice and remix. And this is a poem that's so in our ears, Jake, that we do it anyway. Don't we do that anyway about this poem? It surrounds us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let That's good. Oh, I think this is the first purely non-semantic or almost purely non-semantic mod po minute that we, we should do more of this i'm going to give you a chance to do say one more thing then we're going to have to stop what else uh, you want to say about this i mean just reading it now i feel like i got it's the, the poem is like this car like the, the goddamn car uh, and and there is a sense of a of a drive as you read this poem and specifically reading out loud feels like driving as when when you get of, of like this very swervy driving driving like <laughs> I, I i don't know i drive to santa cruz over here in in bay area it's really close and and the road goes like this constantly oh i know that road it keeps going down too you're 17 oh my gosh and yeah. and and you're driving it and 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 the uh, 
a certain exhilaration and, and craziness and um, comes from reading a poem like this and also a sense like if I snooze out uh, for just one second, I'm going to, something's going to go down. Like you got to be, like you can't be texting as you're reading this poem. <laughs> Though you could be drunk, I think. Although many people have said this kind of uh, is a, a predating of texting because it does that S, SD for said and mm. there is a certain text-ishness mm. about it. Listen, I'm going to get a final word. You know, I've always loved Look Out Where You're Going. Um, it's not clear ultimately whether this is a kind of swipe at the beats for getting in the car, getting hyped up, mm. and driving across country and then deciding to drive back. It may be that. It may be a satire of that. It also may be a lo an expre expressing a longing of the 1950s for someone like Creeley who really craved the idea of going somewhere but not knowing where you're going and then being reminded that you should look out where you're going. And it seems to me not to get too meta, meta mod po minute-ish, but <laughs> we decided to do this mod po minute at the very last minute, totally improvised. And in fact, we had no idea where we're going. And it seems to me that the poem is the perfect invitation to do what we did, which is to riff with each other and just make something of it. Look out. Which is a positive. <laughs> Jake Marmer, thank you so much for spending some time talking about Creeley. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.